Hello and welcome everyone. This is Jody Underhill. Welcome to 30 Days to 30K. Uh, today we're going to be going through talking about exactly what this whole 30 day challenge is going to be about, the steps that I'm going to go through and walking through the 30 day challenge. And also I've got a couple of guests here with me. They're going to share some insights and tips on how to go about uh, not only doing this challenge and talking with people, but also how to research their companies and how to put together the best information to go in there to speak with them about. But before we get started, just to make sure that everyone out there uh, can hear me and is hearing what I say so I'm not just talking to myself, if you could go ahead and just put in what city you're from, that would be great. You'll be looking at where you'll be doing your own 30 day to 30K challenge and how big your city is. So go ahead and so we got Centerville, we got Las Vegas, Cincinnati, South Africa, we got Tustin, Orange County, we got, I uh, hear you loud and clear from London. Um, but from also Lisa's in Lisa's in London right now. That's usually in Tennessee. We have New York. We got Memphis with about a million people. Grants Pass, Medford, Oregon, with seventy-five thousand. We got Valencia, California, is where George is at. We got West Palm Beach with Michael. All right, so we got a a great cross section of people. We got a few more that are typing in there, but in, in looking at we got okay, we got. Um, St. Louis, Missouri, and we got Greenwood, South Carolina. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute, Barry. It's Greenwood. That's very close to Greenville. Uh, will someone be recording this? Yes, Ivan, this will be recorded. And uh, towards the end, I'll share with everyone exactly where to go and find that recording. And since you're here, um, you probably came through 30days30k.com, and I'll be sending you an email to verify exactly where that's going to be. It's going to be on my blog, but it's a little obscure how to find it. Uh, it used to be just jodyunderhill.com, and but now I think it's jodyunderhill.wordpress.com or something like that. But I'll make sure everyone gets the link of exactly where the recording is going to be posted. There's not even any membership that you have to log into or anything. You'll be able to go and watch what's going to happen every day as we go along. So with that in mind, what's going to happen? What is this whole 30 days to 30K about, and what am I going to do? Well, the reason that I developed this 30 days to 30K challenge is because I do a lot of coaching. You know, I've been very successful doing local marketing. I've had very successful students that I've worked with doing local marketing. And but there's still some people that get kind of stuck in their own head, thinking that you know, I just I know that you did this. You did it back in 2009. Things were different then. And also, you were in you were in West Palm Beach, where there's millions of people around from West Palm Beach to Fort Lauderdale and all around. How am I going to be able to do this where I'm at? Am I going to be able to do this? You've already got a big name. You have a big brand. All of these reasons that people find to limit themselves as to what they can do going out and building a business. That's why I'm doing this. Because the time is actually, it's as good now as, or better now than it actually was three years ago whenever I started. Because three years ago, no one really saw the value in doing anything with local marketing or social media. We were, we were making an uphill climb. And when someone came along and there was someone, I remember the first chamber meeting I was in when someone came in and said and they said that they did video marketing and so I was like oh look at there Jody there's your competition now you have competition I was like I don't think so because I don't look at things as being competition I look at it as being partners in awareness if I'm the only person in town doing online marketing then okay there's only one guy how many insurance agents are there in your town how many how many beauty salons are there in your town <laughs> you know, how many restaurants are there in your town that goes to show that there's need for more than just one person doing one thing. And whenever there starts to be more people doing it, it starts to bring it to the forefront of people's attention. That's why I call that partners in awareness. So in this case, I went up to the young lady and I said, um, her name was Bree. I said, hey, Bree, um, you said you do video marketing. I, I do video marketing as well. As I said, whenever I stood up and talked about it, you know, we do social media and we do videos and we do online marketing. Tell me, uh, maybe we could work together or something. Maybe there's a way we could help each other. And she was like, well, actually, yeah, do you have equipment? Because I, I'm, I just have a mic flag, basically, and I interview people. I don't have a cameraman. I just moved here from New York. But if you have a staff or a crew that has cameras and microphones, that would be awesome. And she actually wound up becoming our client because of that. So you know, there's, the comp there's the competition. Yeah, there's people out there that say they do what we do, but they don't do it like we do it. And they don't have the same, they don't come from the same place of service that I hope every person on this call comes from whenever you go out there and start talking with people about doing local marketing, whether it's doing social media, doing mobile apps, doing 
um, if doing video marketing. It doesn't matter what type of local marketing you're doing, as long as you're coming from a place of service and doing the best thing that you can for the client and, and relying on someone to help you through that process, you're going to separate yourself from the competition hands down. So with that in mind, what is this going to be? Well, I'm going to go to a new city. I'm going to build a brand new business and I'm going to do it with a new identity. As a lot of people, you know, a lot of people know me for as being the guy in the cowboy shirts. You know, and I've got that, you know, back on that other page and I've got the brand there, the internet marketing maverick with the barbed wire around it and you know, the name of my comp the company is Upside Down Iceberg and people are like, well, you're going to, if you go in and use that, there's all kind of, uh, there's, you have all kinds of, what is the word I'm looking for? Credibility to go along with that. You have results that you can share. Well, the thing is, is I'm not using any of that. When I say I'm going to go to a new city and a new business, I'm not going to use Upside Down Iceberg. I'm not going to use my brand. I'm not going to be wearing cowboy shirts. I'm going to be going in, just hit the ground, just brand new. Kind of like the old Robert Allen challenge, drop me in any city. Well, that's what I'm doing here. I'm stripping away everything that I had before. I'm not using any of my old results. I'm not using my, my business name and I'm not using my brand. I'm going in as a brand new person to a city that I've never done business in before. So where is that city? Well, that city is going to be Spartanburg, South Carolina. Population 37,013. The county, the whole county of Spartanburg County, has about 180,000 people spread around, and spread, spread around in little cities around Spartanburg. And if you're looking at this, you see here's Spartanburg, and it's, um, it's got this little red area. Well, where I live is over here in Greenville, actually where Simpsonville is right here, but this area, which is much bigger, has about 650,000 people. But I'm not going to do it there. I'm going to hop on the interstate every day, run over here 35 miles, and as you can see, there's big wide open areas between those two cities, and I'm going to go to Spartanburg. I've, never been, I've been there one time, and that was for a volleyball tournament on a Saturday at a high school. The only business that I have been to there is a Panera Bread, where we had lunch during the volleyball tournament. So other than that, I have never been to Spartanburg, <coughs> Spartanburg South Carolina. So that's where I'm going to go. And I did this with a you know, a city population of 37,000 to show that it can be done in a small town, small city, just as well as it can be in a big city. Got it. All right. So moving right on. So Spartanburg, and I mean, it's it's really sort of a, it's a kind of a laid back little southern town. It's right on the border of North Carolina and South Carolina. Um, I, I looked at, the, I've looked at pictures of the city because I've never actually been to the city. But what are, what are we going to do whenever we go there? Well, during this 30-day challenge, this is what I'm going to be showing you. I'm going to reveal all the secrets of how to identify the best prospects. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to go through to find new clients. I'm going to show you how to determine their needs, how to define your offer, how to present your offer, the secrets to actually getting paid because that's what a lot of people struggle with is, is getting that check coming in the door. And I'm also going to show you how to get clients um, lining up, let me get down here where I can actually see this, have clients lining up to do business with you. Um, so that's, there's some people are really lining up to do business with you? Yeah, because the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to offer exclusivity to the people that I work with. And if I'm working with a, a dentist, I'm only going to work with one dentist in Spartanburg. And by the, whenever they see what I'm going to be able to do for people, they're going to be wanting to find out how they can be the first in line to do that so that I, that I don't start working with their competition kind of like a BNI meeting, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. I'm only going to take on one client per industry in the city, and I'm going to have exclusivity, and I'm going to promote and push that exclusivity as I go through and do this challenge. So what am I going to do first? That's what a lot of people say. What's the first thing to do? What should I do? Well, the first thing is I'm going to go to the chamber. I tell every person that I coach when I go through this, and most are working on a national brand, the first thing you need to do is you need to go to the Chamber of Commerce and you need to not run in and join the Chamber. I've never told anyone to go join the Chamber. You walk in the door. I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, hi, my name is Jody. I own a local marketing company. And in order to be successful, I need to get in front of business owners and talk with them. How can your Chamber help me get in front of as many business owners as possible that are members here? And I'm just going to be quiet and I'll let them share with me how they can help me get in front of those business owners. 
whenever you do that, most people go in and join the chamber, and then they get frustrated because they go to a networking meeting, and they, they don't really follow through with exactly how to go about doing that. Whenever you ask them how they can help you get in front of people, now, whenever they, do, they answer you, it's going to be one of a couple of things. You can either come to, maybe they have an open house or an orientation where they go through all the benefits of the chamber, which is fine because, believe it or not, there are people that have been to those meetings several times. They keep going because they know new people are going to be there so they can meet the new people joining the chamber. Or they're going to invite you to a networking event and say, so you come to a networking event as our guest. They're going to, you don't even have to pay for this. You're going to be able to go for free, and they'll invite you to come in and see the types of business owners and the type of turnout that they have for their networking events. Now, if they don't do this, then it may not be the best fit for you. And if they don't do it immediately, you may go ahead and kind of spur them a little bit and suggest, well, is there any way that I could um, possibly come visit one of your networking events to see what it would be like? So if they don't offer it immediately, which they, usually they will, but if they don't, don't be shy in asking them, say, well, what if I, is there any way I can come to an event to see what kind of turnout you have or um, what kind of business owners show up? And go ahead and, and ask them that. Now, the next thing is, um, let's see. And Mark says, all my family roots are in Spartanburg. That's cool. All right, let me get rid of some of these questions so that I can see them as they are coming in. So bear with me just a second. Um, oh, Hold on. There we go. Now I can see them as they come in. So the other thing, once I go there and join, as I'm going to be looking at their, as I have on the screen here, their calendar of events. Almost every chamber out there, if they're sophisticated at all, will have a chamber of events. And you'll look on there and find out the ones. You don't need to go attend everything, but you do need to attend the ones that are going to make the most sense. Um, the, the, one, the one on the 12th, the Spartanburg Young Professionals, First Thursdays, <laughs> they can hear you. <laughs> And so that was my wife laughing at me about going to the young. He won't be it. <laughs> I might go. Who knows? I could dye my hair dark and dye my my beard black, and that would look probably maybe ten years younger. So it, I could fit in. I think you have to be under forty, and I would look almost under forty. Um, so that's not that funny, okay? Um, and then I also have someone else here that's also laughing who is under forty. So I'll just send him in my place. No, I'm um, but you're know, looking at it now. The thing is, is that. With, with looking at these events, look at the, one that's, the ones that are going to make the most sense and go and attend those events. Like, for instance, the, um, there's one on here, the SYP meeting, the SIP. Um, I'm going to show you something about that a little bit later, which may, be, um, may make it so that I want to attend more of those SYP. I don't know where really what it stands for, but this one on the 10th is the SYP marketing series. And what does it say? Um, i got to move the thing here launch something, so helping to launch. Now the other thing is, if you notice at the very beginning, here it says, I think it's um, leveraging, uh, on the third, leveraging business social media. And someone's like, well, wow, would you go to that? Of course I'll go to that. What better place to meet people that are interested in possibly doing online marketing than someone attending someone else's event on how to leverage social media? And the chances are, I may or may not know more than they do about the subject, or I may or may not be able to ask questions that, that show me as being a more of an expert than that person. So I will, you know, will, um, I will go about, I will go to that meeting and I will attend that. Someone asked if I could make the screen bigger. Actually, Please. it's just, it's the, uh, it's the, the um, I can try to do that, but it's going to distort it for a lot. Let's see here. It really wasn't to be able to. There we go. How about that? Is that better? All right. I'm hitting F5. Actually, I'm hitting, I'm on <laughs> Mac, so I'm hitting Command Plus. See? There you go. Now, maybe you can read it a little bit better. Um, um, and there's other, if the point is, is that you want to look at the calendar, and you want to see what's going to be going on in those events, what's happening during the month. And as you can see, there's, there's several days that nothing's happening, so I can't rely solely on the chamber. I'm going to have to rely on several other things as well, and we'll talk about those in just a second. But with those chamber meetings, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to make sure that whenever I go to these events, that I have a plan of attack, that I have a goal in mind for what I'm going to do whenever I go there. Because what happens, a lot of people go to networking events to see who's going to show up. Well, I am a firm believer that you, whenever you write something down, 
and you put a goal of who you're looking to meet or the type of business that you're looking to meet, that you tend to see that more often. It's called reticular activation. And that is, if you've ever wanted a new car, and suddenly, if all of a sudden you wanted a, I don't know, a red, a red Cadillac CRX, suddenly, okay, they can hear you. CT, <laughs> Cadillac CTS, suddenly everywhere you look, there would be a red Cadillac CTS or a white one or a blue one, but you would see Cadillac CTSs everywhere if that's what you were looking for. The same thing here, if you're looking to meet doctors and dentists and chiropractors and uh, construction companies and um, or attorneys, whenever you go to these networking events, the chances of finding them is going to increase because that's who you're looking for. You'll tend to find them more often. Does that mean they're magically going to hocus pocus by the law of the secret suddenly appear where they wouldn't be? No, it just means you're going to be more receptive to seeing that they're there. Um, just like if you suddenly needed a dry cleaners, if you drove on a street that you haven't been on before and there were three or four dry cleaners, they would stand out to you because it's what you're looking for. So set a goal of who it is that you're looking to meet. Now one of the things that I'm going to be looking to meet immediately is I'm going to let me get over here to the goal page. I'm going to be looking to meet strategic alliances. And those strategic alliances that I'm going to be looking to meet are people who have a complementary product or service to what I offer. And that complementary product or service for me, the first ones I'm going to be looking for are promotional products companies. Those people that provide the pens and pencils and tchotchkes, I want to find those people because if they're talking to them, <coughs> then they probably would not looking to grow their brand and they should probably also be talking to me or sales trainers or business consultants. Those are great strategic alliances that offer a complementary product or service. The next thing I'm going to be looking for are people who call on the same clients that I'm looking for. I'm going to be looking for people who, who write property and casualty insurance because they deal with business owners. I'm going to be looking for people, believe it or not, who sell business supplies. Uh, there are they're small business supply companies that compete with Office Depot and with, with Office Max and with Staples and they go in and they meet with those business owners. That's a great strategic alliance for me. The other thing are business attorneys, attorneys that are working with business owners. CPAs, these are centers of influence, CPAs, business bankers. I'm going to be looking to sit down and meet with as many of those people as I can to find out what they're looking for and also share with them how they may be able to help me find who I'm looking for. And the next thing I'm going to be identifying are the movers and shakers. I'm going to be looking to identify with as many movers and shakers in Spartanburg as I can. Now, right now, I don't know anyone in Spartanburg, but I can promise you within by this time next week, I'm going to know enough people to know who the movers and shakers are because I'm going to ask those questions. When I meet somebody who's a little talkative at a networking event, so tell me, if you were to point, if you had to say who are the top movers and shakers in this chamber, who would it be? If you were going to sit down with a mover and shaker, who would you sit down with? And then I'm going to go about finding those people and finding ways to be introduced to them so that I can start to build a relationship with them and also build their know, like, and trust you factor with me so that I can start to expand my relationship with other people in that chamber and in that community because there's no easier, faster way to build confidence than, than to be introduced by someone who everyone seems to look at as a leader in the community. Let's see. Yes, as Lee said, yes, setting an intention. When you set an intention, it tends to work better. Now, as I mentioned before, that SYP thing, I, I, let's call it, this is SY, Sip and Shuck. And if it wasn't for the fact that it was my daughter's uh, 17th birthday today, uh, I would be going to Sip and Shuck tonight. Because it's uh, from 6.30 to 10, they have roasted oysters, beer and wine, low country boil, and live music. What better place to go network than at a place where they have oysters and beer? I mean, that would be, I mean, I was, I'm almost, I, I may just have to leave the birthday party early and go here anyway, even if I, it just, just because they have oysters and beer. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm a sucker for that, but I mean, also, when you go to a thing like this, people are a lot more relaxed, they're more casual, you can be, they introduce you to people more easily, so, if, especially if you can find some, oh, if I, I wish I was starting the challenge today, I would be there, but I'm not starting it until Monday, so there you go. Um, I think it would be a good time, and I think that, um, I still think that I should go. Can I go? 
It says um, young professionals. I don't think they'll let you. It's know. hosted by the young professionals. It doesn't <laughs> oh. say. It doesn't say you have to be a young professional. Young, young is a state of mind. Gosh. Well, then you've got that. Covered. So, so what would I do at a networking event that I went to? So if I went to this sip and shuff thing, or if I went to one of the other events that the that the chamber is having. Well, how is it that I would go about talking to people and telling them all about my business? Well, the fact is, I wouldn't go about telling them all about my business. I would just ask them questions about them. Now, a number of you have already seen and have already seen this and already know what these are, but this is exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going. It's the same thing I tell everyone that they should do when building their business. Is I'm going to go there and I'm going to ask those people four questions. I'm going to ask them, "What do you do?" <clears throat> I'm going to ask them, how long have you been doing that? Now, the reason I ask them how long they've been doing that is if they're brand new or if they've been at it a while, that will change. That will make it so that I, I'll make a mental note of that so that you know, if they're brand new at it, they may be looking to for ways that they can increase the traction with in which they get clients, so they may need to increase their marketing. If they've been doing it for a long time, maybe they're set in their ways and their answer would be you know, had it, you know, that they get most of their, refer, most of their business through referrals at which point we could expand on that possibly for them. But I don't go straight into that. I just, as soon as they finish answering how long they've been doing it, the next thing I ask is, what do you like about it? And the reason I want to ask them what do they like about it is because they may not like anything about it. Um, for instance, I know someone who owns a carpet cleaning business who's trying to get out of that business, and the last thing he wants is more carpets to clean. So if I said, what do you like about it? He goes, absolutely nothing. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at selling the business. Now what do you do? You don't go into, oh, well, maybe I could help you promote, the, do that through online marketing and get more business. No, maybe now you start looking at who do you know that may want to buy a carpet cleaning business. Or if you run into someone, who, you know, if you go talk to another carpet cleaning business, maybe they want to buy him out. You start looking for things that might be relevant for that. Now, if they say, oh, I love it, what I love about it is being able to help people and do this and, and, and change their lives or whatever they say about what they like about doing it, in that case, that's a perfect opportunity for to help them change more people's lives or help more people with the benefits that their product or service offers. And the third, I mean, the fourth question that I asked then is, how would I know if someone I'm speaking to would be a good referral for you? And that question is the most powerful of all because what it does is it shows them that you care enough to ask them how you can refer them business. And not only ask them how you can refer them business, but also asking them how you know that it's someone who needs their business. Because as, as I've found out, if you find somebody who needs it, it's a lot better referral than referring them just somebody who may or may not need it. So whenever you come across that, make sure that you, you know, whenever you ask them that question, listen to what they say. Now, sometimes they may go, um, I, um, I don't know, anybody could use my business. Okay, and I have a way of handling that too. I'm going, really? Okay, great. I have, a, I have a six year old stepdaughter. Is she your best? Is she your best client? No? Okay. Well, what about I have a I have a 84 year old grandmother. Is she your best client? No. Okay. How about the Chinese? Are they your best client? Okay. Now, now we've gotten rid of a billion and two. So who would really be a good referral for you? And by then they're usually laughing and they'll tell me more along the lines of who a good referral for them would be. And also I usually will take this a step further sometimes when they tell me what a good referral. Well, how do you find them now? Now, I don't go into asking them about marketing or anything else. I'm just making mental notes because then I'm looking to see if they care enough to flip it back to me. I'm looking to see if they're going to flip back to me and ask me what I do and how, how long I've been doing it and what I like best about it and how, what would make a good referral for me. And the way I would answer those questions, because a lot of you on this call are saying, well, how would you answer that? I'm brand new at this. I haven't been doing this online marketing for very long. How would I go about doing that? Well, the easiest way to do it, what do you do? And what I always say is, well, you know how these days most businesses have a website? Yes, this is what they say. So well, what I do is create hundreds to thousands of places online for people to find information online that sends them to that website ready to take an action. What I do is create hundreds to thousands of places online for people to find information that sends them to that website ready to take an action. And then the, usually they ask, how do you do that? 
to which I say, well, we use a number of different online strategies. We utilize social media. We utilize uh, we, we optimize their web pages. We use um, Google Places and Google Plus Local. We use directories. We make sure that anywhere anyone's looking for that information, they find it. It would probably take me about 20 to 30 minutes to really go in to explain that in depth. And we're both here probably you know to make new connections and meet new people. But I would love to learn more about your business. And if you'd like to know more about how we do that, I'd love maybe we sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and we could maybe you know, look at how we could help each other grow our business. And then I would set an appointment. So if they ask me how long I've been doing that, I'm going to handcuff myself during this challenge. I'm going to say, well, you know, actually, I'm brand new here in Spartanburg, so I'm just getting started. But I work with a team that's been doing that that gets has been getting fabulous results across the country. Is how I'm going to answer that because I'm putting myself in the position that I don't have results to show anybody. I'm not going to show anybody anything that I've done in the past. I'm going to start off with zero because the thing is, no one's ever asked me to see my results, and I'm going to do it with this and prove it. And then finally, what is a good referral for me? I'm going to answer that in two ways. Well, there's actually a couple of different things. The first is, if you know anyone who owns or runs a promotional products company or does business consulting, that would be a great referral for me. The other way you would know if someone you're talking to would be a good referral is if they are look if they just aren't seem to be getting the enough, the enough business or if they've been open for a while and they're just not getting enough repeat business, I would love the chance to be able to speak with them. And all you could say is if they say that is, yeah, well, you know, I know somebody that happens to specialize in online marketing. Um, would it be okay if I have them give you a call and you could talk about it, see if it's a fit? And if not, there'd be, you know, there's no pressure, no obligation. Is it okay if I have them give you a call? And that's how I ask for people to refer me whenever they refer business to me. Uh, let's see. How did I find the? Let's see. So I mean, how did you find this ad? Oh, that ad. Um, I'll show you how I found the ad. I went back on the calendar. On this calendar, this calendar is for October. I went backwards one month to September, and then I clicked on one of these boxes here for the event because it said "Sip and Shuck Oysters," and it got my attention, and so I clicked on it, and that's how that ad popped up. It was um, it's on a page and I just did a screenshot off the page of that event. It's actually on the Chambers website that um, Chambers website where you can go and actually on that same page you can register for that sip and shuck. Um, let's see. Although you're taking probably the most envious part to this city, which is your vast amount of knowledge, so wonderful. Really excited about the determining product portion, how you get videos done in this area, assuming not your studio also, will you have Facebook, Twitter ads? Yes, I'll be talking about, let's see, I need to learn how to say that with confidence. Um, the part that I said is really, it's a, it's a, here's the thing, with say that with confidence, I'm assuming you're meaning about the what you do, and it's really a two-part formula. The first part of the formula is, you know how these days most businesses have this problem, to which they typically would say yes. The second part of that formula is, then you say, well, what I do is solve it in this really cool way that makes you want to know more. <laughs> that's the formula. And that's just how I created that. So it's in my words. You can probably take that and turn it into your words of the, you know, these days most businesses have this problem. Well, what I do is solve this problem in this really cool way that you probably want to know more about. Um, Yes, I'm recording this. Uh, no, it will not be in any portal. It will be on my blog, which I'll make sure everyone has a link to. Um, Jody, can you repeat the line about thousands of places online that bring clients to business? I think it did that. Um, let's see. Is this recorded? Didn't catch your net? Yes, it is recorded. All right, so moving right along. I, th I should only use all of these put a disclaimer at the bottom. Yes, this is being recorded. <laughs> I always record what I'm... Oh, that wasn't cool. Hold on. And we're back. All right, so back to the questions. Those are the questions that I ask. What am I going to next? And at the event, what I do is I go ahead and I set appointments. Just as I said, maybe it would make sense for us to get together tomorrow, or the next day, grab a cup of coffee, and I could learn more about your business. See, what happens, most people say, well, yeah, I could, we could get some coffee. I'll tell you all about me. Well, they don't really care about you. They care about them. Right now, they just met you. So you need to make them, you got to look do the, you got to tune into the station that everyone, that everyone you're talking to is going to be tuned to, and that is W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? 
So what's in it for them is, yeah, maybe we can grab a cup of coffee. I would love to learn more about your business and how I and how I could refer business to you, and then I then, then maybe I can share a little bit more with you about my business. Then they're going to say yes because they're interested in telling you more about their business. That's why that works out so well. So go ahead and I go ahead and set appointments right then. I mean, if you if you're in this business, you probably have a smartphone so that you can go ahead and schedule an appointment. If you don't have a smartphone, take something with you so you can write it down or write it on the back of their card. Have time set aside. The other thing I'm going to make sure I do is anytime I go to a networking event, I have two to three hours set aside the next day specifically for meeting with people that I meet at that networking event. Because my goal going in there is to meet two people I've never met before, which in this case is going to be really simple because I've never met anyone there, and also to have at least two to three appointments set for the next day to be able to sit down and talk with people. Now that does not mean that they're going to be prospect appointments. They're going to probably be strategic alliance appointments where I'm going to sit down and learn more about their business and help them know more about my business so that we do know how to refer business to one another. And, in, in, and during that time, you think there's a chance they may say, well, could this work for my business? To which I would go, probably, I don't know, are you, maybe, but are you interested in that for your business? And then you go right into a prospect meeting if you set it up that way. So you do want to set appointments. The other thing that I do, and I tell everyone else to do this, and if you're not doing this, shame on you, but this is what I do. Every person that I meet at a networking event that gives me a business card, I send them a thank you note. In this case, it would be like this. Vanessa, it was a pleasure meeting you at the Chamber After Hours event at Dolce. If I can ever refer business your way, I certainly will. Jody, that's it. No, you know, no business card. I've already given my business card. They have my business card. No extra. If you ever need a thingamajiggy or a watsy, be sure to give me a call because I'm the best thingamajiggy whoozywatsy person in town. None of that. Just plain, here it is. Thank you. It was nice meeting you. And you'll be, and I usually do those and mail them out that exact same evening. And you'd be surprised how many people call. They're astonished that they receive that from you, or they call you to thank you for your thank you note. Now, some people say, "Well, what about Send Out Cards? Send Out Cards is a great company. I, I'm a member of Send Out Cards, uh, but I don't do Send Out Cards for this because I want to. The, I want the return address to be from where I'm at. I want it to be postmarked there. So that's why I'm going to drop them in the mail from Spartanburg." because I want it to be postmarked there, although my address is going to say Greenville because I'm not getting an office in Spartanburg, but, uh, but it will be from somewhere near the area. So I, I will drop them in the mail there in Spartanburg so they're postmarked from there. Um, someone says, how do you decide which people it makes sense to set appointments with you? I set appointments with those people who flip the question back to me. If I'm going to be building a strategic alliance, if I, they just talk about themselves and then never ask me about me and walk away, there's no real reason for me to set a meeting with them because they're selfish and all they care about is themselves and they're not really looking to build and grow a network. But when people flip those questions back to you, those are people who get it and they, they understand how to network. and They know it's about making contacts and expanding their reach through building a network of people who know who they are and will help them help them promote their business as well. Um, let's see, do you set only appointments to those who match your list of who you're looking for? No. If there's someone interesting that's really interested in me, they may they could be one of those movers and shakers, and I don't know they're a mover and shaker, and they could be, I don't know, I'm just gonna they could be the director of a funeral home, but they're a mover and shaker. I still want to sit down and meet with them. Or they could be, you know, I mean they they could be they could own an antique store. Um, they could own a consignment shop. I still want to meet with them, even if they're not in my direct target. You know, they don't meet the, the high end, the high level, the doctors, the dentists, the, the attorneys. Although um, my wife has several, uh, has a couple of consignment shop type businesses that she works with that do very well because they do high end consignment. Um, also, funeral homes tend to do tend to do well because that's where people go to look is online. I don't know if the funeral home needs a Facebook page. But they do. They do need to make sure that their stuff shows up online. Um, let's see. And Michelle says, "Got some very nice responses from doing that. Got emails. That's great. That's on the handwritten. Thank you. Um, can you send them an email? Yeah, Rob, you can send them an email. And I'm going to be a little bit of a jerk here. If you want to look just like everybody else, because <laughs> everybody sends an email. It's lazy and it's easy. Whenever you take the time to handwrite the thank you and mail it to them in the mail." It makes you stand out. 
it's in, in any business, it's so easy to stand out just by taking the time to do something with a little special touch that you want to separate yourself from what everyone else is doing. Whether I go to a networking event, I get five or six emails from people I've met. I can count on one hand the number of handwritten thank yous I've gotten, and I can also tell you exactly the names of all five of those people. Actually, it wasn't five, it was four people who have sent me those thank you notes in the business that they work for because it stands out. Matter of fact, I still have a couple of them sitting on my desk because from where they sent them to me that I obviously use as examples, but you want to make sure that you stand out whenever you do that. <coughs> Um, how would they contact you if you don't provide a telephone number in the night? Did you give them a business card at the meeting? Yes. I mean, that's why I don't. I give them their. If I'm mailing this to, them, if I have their business card, they then they have my business card. And if they don't, they'll they will have remember that they just met me. Um, so you focus on finding strategic alliance more than potential clients. I, yes, I go in looking for strategic alliances, and I will because that sets me up for building a network. But and I, when I run across potential clients, I set meetings with them as well. But I don't make because going to a networking event to prospect winds up with sometimes less than less than popular results or less than I don't know. Not popular is not the word. Um, you don't get the result that you're looking for if you go there specifically to prospect because people can sense that about you. If you're going there to prospect, they think you're going there just to sell them something. If you're going there to build strategic alliances, you're coming from a position of service and you're going there to meet people that you can help, that you can help by networking with them and, and expanding your reach and you come across and you have a different demeanor when you go in there looking to build relationships rather than sell a product or service. Um, what we'll use for is return address, uh, I'm still being new, uh, um, being new, I still offer, you have the office out of my house, would I put that? That's up to you. I mean, I probably wouldn't put my my home address. It'd probably be advisable to get like a mailboxes or us or a UPS store type thing where it's like ten bucks a month for a mailing address because you don't want every you just met these people. You don't want every crazy in town having the, your home address. So I would probably use uh, utilize a, uh, a a postal service type thing to do that. Um, if you have two people in the same business, do you tell them both you refer business to them if you can? Yeah. Because there may one of them may or may not be a better person for service than the other one. There may be something different about them. Do you need to back up because you're coughing right into it? <laughs> right. So yeah. Um, let's see. Did you just say every crazy? Yeah, every because you don't know. I said you're just meeting these people. They could be sane. They could be crazy. If you give your business, your home address out to everybody, who knows? There may the chances are there's going to be a crazy one. They just I'm just saying. So, all right, let's get moving along here. I can hear you. All right. So yes, the microphone is very sensitive, so I've made Vanessa back away. She has a little bit of a cold, and she's trying her best not to cough, but I made her move away, and she's mad at me now, but I'm hopefully no more coughing. Uh, all right, so next, I'm, next, next the, third, the second thing I'm going to do, the third second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go visit all both B&I chapters in Spartanburg. <laughs> There's exactly two, but I can promise you I'm going to both of them. One meets on Tuesday at 11.30, the other one meets on Thursday at 11.30. Well, the other thing is, just like everyone else, I don't have every day set aside to go build this business because I have other things going on. You know, I still run a full, I run a full-time um, outsource coaching program. I run a full, I have a full-time regular bit local marketing business that I also run that's not going to be tied to this. Um, and I also have other obligations. So I'm not going to be able to, I may go this Tuesday, I'll be able to go to Cribs Kitchen on West Main Street for the Palmetto Network Connection, but I will not be able to go Thursday to the East Side Professional Network, and where do they meet? I'm going to move my question box here, at the Spice of Life on 100 Wood Row. Um, so I can't go this Thursday because I'll be in L.A. So I'm going to have to wait and go, um, go next Thursday after I get back. I'm going to be going Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, of next week, so I'm only going to have three days to start this, and then I'm going to be, you know, then I'm going to get back, then I'll start it up again. So, I'm, but I am going to go to both of these meetings now. If I was able to open this up and show you the list of membership, both of these groups have someone who specializes. One of them is as an 
information technology company, which says computer sciences, which is very broad. The other one is a uh, is an advertising agency. And some people go, oh, you can't go there. Sure, I can. I can go visit and identify what those people do and, and learn a little bit more about them. And I can d differentiate myself completely from them. Because in these BNI meetings, just because you sell insurance doesn't mean that, that no other insurance agent can be there. If you sell property and casualty insurance, I guarantee you there will be a life insurance person there. If they do websites, guess what? I don't do websites. I do online marketing. I send traffic to those websites. If they do, if they do social media, guess what? I'm the video marketing person. I can find a way to fit my business into the group if I choose to do so. Now the thing is, you can't be members of two BNI groups. And the other thing is, I probably will not join either one of these BNI groups because I'm not, because this is because I don't really know if the, either one of these is going to be a fit. But I can promise you that during this month, I will be able to go and visit both of them two times. And by from there, I will be able to become those recognize me more the second time, obviously. But I'm going to go and visit those two BNI groups. And I'm also going to look for every other type of networking group that's available in Spartanburg. I'm going to go look on meetup.com. There's several groups that are on meetup. I'm going to go see if there's any other after hours networking groups because I'm sure that there are. And the thing is, and the reason that I don't have all of these things is because I'm not doing all this until Monday. I'm starting this business on Monday and Monday when I go to the chamber, I'm going to ask them, what other networking groups do you know of in town? If I was going to go somewhere else, where else do you know of that, that has networking events? And I'm going to let them do that without me having to spend hours and hours researching them. But I can go on this free website that we have here in the upstate that you can ask any question and it will give you the best answer it can find. And it's free here. And it's probably free where you are too. It's called Google. And you can ask those questions and come up with where else you can go get in front of business owners. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to schedule a speaking event. And I promise you I am not going to be dressed like this. This was the first speaking event I ever did on social media. And it was, uh, you may not be able to see it, but over there on the screen it says social media. What is it? This was in August of 2009. And decided we are going to be the, the guys in the black suits. And it was okay until the, an hour into the presentation when the air conditioning went off. And it was August in Florida, and it became like 2,000 degrees. So, um, so anyway, I'm going to be setting up a speaking engagement. Actually, I'm going to set up two. I'm going to have one set up for the third week and one set up for the fourth week of October because I need time to meet people to put them into the event. And I'm going to be inviting every person I meet to my overview. So I'm going to go ahead and find a location to have it and have them invite them to it. And then the other thing I'm going to do, the reason I have the big Facebook logo there, is that I'm going to be running ads on Facebook inviting people to the event. And I'm going to target Spartanburg business owners or people within 50 miles of Spartanburg. Whenever I did this, when I first came to Greenville, I, I did two events the same week. I did one on Tuesday at the Chamber, and I did one on Thursday at an, in another little city called Malden, um, and invited people there st specifically through Facebook, and wound up with 21 people in the room for running about $100 worth of Facebook ads, and wound up closing two clients. So the investment of the $100 for the space, and $100 for the ads, $200 in investment, and turned it into about $4,000 worth of business, it was a worthwhile endeavor. I'm going to be doing the same thing here. Because remember, I'm not trying to get one client. I'm not trying to get two. I'm looking at making $30,000 in 30 days. So I'm going to be doing every one of these things, and I'm going to be going about, and I'm going to pull out all the stops, and I'm going to be doing all of this as much as I can, because I really, as much as I'm going to be out of town and doing different things, I've really only got about 15 days of time I can actually work on this project to be able to do this. So with that in mind, let me look at the questions down here real quick. Um, let's see. Um, by the way, Lori Beth says, she's sorry that you have a cough. Thank you for moving away from the microphone. And as the, in the words of Von Quickly, rude, uh, we're do the crazy eye test. How much time do you spend researching, finding all this info to make your plans? Well, I spent about 20 minutes around noon, I decided, ooh, I got to do this webcast at, at 1 o'clock. And as you can see by the professionalism of my slides, I did not spend all that much time putting these things together. 
I went and said, ooh, I, I, went, I literally went and looked at the Chamber website for the first time at about about noon. I went and looked at that. That's and, just for making the slides, not making your plan for the 30 oh, days. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, for making the slides. <laughs> the plans for the 30 days, this is what I did. This is how I built my business originally. And then when I moved to Greenville, it's how I did, redid it again. And this is how I helped. So I, yeah, I do have a little bit of advantage that the steps that I put in place, I've gone through these steps before, so I know this is what I'm going to do. And the benefit of me doing that is that you'll be able to follow me through these steps and go and do the same things as I'm doing them. So hopefully um, that, let's see, are most chambers open regular business hours to walk in and ask questions? Yes. Typically, most of them are open from like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, they, or they may be you know, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Usually it's at least 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. that you'll be able to walk in. And when you go in, you don't want to talk to just anyone. You really want to ask to speak to the membership director because the membership director is not going to, they're going to be, they're going to be the person that is going to be able to give you the most information because they are the most seasoned salesperson in the group. Um, and when I say salesperson, don't let oh, they're going to sell me, but they're going to be asking you questions to make sure that they are the right fit. So if you're talking to a junior person, they're probably going to sell you. So just make sure that you're speaking with someone. Um, Let's see. Just got on. Was that with a client? Good, Jeffrey. Oh, Ivan says very dapper. Yeah, that was. Um, let's see. Will you share what the Facebook ads look like? Absolutely, Lee. As I go through this and run the Facebook ads, I will absolutely show what they look like. Is this being recorded? Yes, it's being recorded. When will you be speaking? Are you going to be showing a slide? And if so, what device will you use? Um, I will. Yes, I'll. When I. Um, Yes, I'll be using slides, and I'll be using whatever projector. Uh, I don't know. It's an Epson something. It's an Epson FJX11, super cali super calibrated for the high intensity. It's just it's an Epson projector. It's like a four hundred dollar projector that sometimes the chamber has them. And some, the chamber, a lot of times, wherever you're going to do the presentation, they will have um, they will have a projector. But I will be using uh, the projector that I that I already have. Um, so yeah, up oh, there's another advantage. Sorry. But yeah, I have a projector, and I've had one for years, so I'll be using a projector. Um, when you meet people at chamber events, will you invite them to your presentations? No way. I would not want anybody. Of course, yes. That's the main reason. The main thing I'll be doing is inviting those people to the to my speaking engagement, um, and I'll give. That's why I'm having two choices, so they can come to one if they can't make it to the second one. I was always fine when I do two back to back. I've already prepared for them. I've already got it planned. It's easier to promote to two at the same time. That way people can make a choice if they can make it during the day or if they can make it um, in the evening. I usually schedule do one around 10 a.m. Um, at, a, at, a, at a business location, and I usually do one like at 6 p.m. a few days later at a place that's a little more casual. And what I learned the last time was I never did this before. All we ever provided was water. The, me, the, the morning ones we usually do like coffee and donuts, and the evening ones all I ever did was water. But this place was like a place where they do weddings, and so they allow alcohol. So I bought these two big bottles of white wine and two big bottles of red wine, and they seemed to really like that I had that there. So And they seemed to buy more after they had you get them liquored up. No, I'm kidding. Um, it's up to you, whatever you have there. But typically, I would not, um, I usually maybe wine in the evening, but probably not at 10 o'clock in the morning. Usually coffee and donuts for that. Um, let's see. Sorry, Lee, let's see. Um, we're going to record the room so we can see you deliver the presentation. Yeah, matter of fact, I'll put a link on a blog, um, on my blog after I put this up, of me actually giving the presentation that I did within the last, I don't know, six months. Uh, so I've already got one of those that I'll put on there, but I'll also do that as well. Do you have a prepared slide presentation to share with us? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll get, you have access to that already, Linda. Um, it's in the, yeah. all right. The next thing I'm going to do after I do the speaking engagement, and I'm not, I'm not looking to put 100 people in a room. As you can see with this room, it's not that big of a room. Uh, we, have, we, put, we had three rows of check, the tables, um, and we had a row of seats along the back, and we had 25 people. And as you can see, there was the two chairs are empty here um, because the, the computer was in the way. Oh, that was way back in the day. That was, I had a big old clunker of a laptop. That's not even a Mac. I'm kind of embarrassed to put that slide up. That was before I was a Mac guy. But um, but I'm usually I'm going to try to put between 20 and 25 people in a room. I'm not trying to like fill a stadium or anything. So um, how many people did I close? Whenever I on the, this meeting, when I did this first first one, um, within the first week we closed two of the people. 
that were at this meeting. I didn't close anyone at the meeting. I did it uh, later on. I had them fill out an evaluation form. But the one that I did um, where I put the, the people, how many did I close when we had the wine? Um, there were 21 people in the room. I closed two of them at the event and collected money from them. Credit card from one and a check from the other one, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I closed two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Yes, I have, I've already had the speaking engagements recorded. All right. So that's the speaking engagement. The next thing I'm going to do is this other thing that everyone's heard me do. And that is I'm going to send out yellow page ads. I'm going to go through the yellow pages. I'm going to pull out the full page ad or half page ad and I'm going to put this post-it note on it. Saw your ad in the yellow pages. Have some ideas how you may be able to improve on this. Give me a call. Jody. And that's all that goes on the post-it note. Now I wish I could write the post-it note where that would fit on there that easily because it's hard to get all those words on there. But I'll put that post-it note on there and I will mail it to them and so for them to call me back. And when they call me back I will simply share with them. You know, I'll ask them some questions about what they're currently doing with their marketing and then go through it and explain to them how Yellow Pages is usually the target market is people that are over 75 years of age. Kind of odd. I, I, this picture that I got here has funeral home services. So it's usually people over 75 for that too. Um, but then I'll send, you know, explain to them that that's probably not the best use of their marketing dollars and then go through what other types of marketing that they're currently doing. And that's the activities that I'm going to be working on next week. I mean, that's what I'm going to start with. I'm not laying out here's the entire thing every day because this plan is going to change. This is going to be fluid. It's going to happen. It's going to change as I go through all the time. Um, it's going to, um, I'm going, depending on the, what I get from the, what I get from the chamber, or what kind of feedback I get from there, what type of networking events, how BNI goes. I'll be sharing with you every step of the way how I will be doing each of these things and what, and what the responses that I'm getting from them. And right now, I have not sent out any yellow page ads because I'm going to get the yellow pages for Spartanburg from the chamber when I go there Monday morning. Um, so I'm, I, then I will start sending those out probably Monday afternoon or Monday evening. I'll start dropping the first of those in the mail to start so that I hopefully within a week or so from mailing those, I'll start getting calls back. And the, and the thing is, is, a lot of people mail these out and they go, I mailed them out yesterday, but nobody's called. Well. It, people usually don't just get it and all of a sudden run to the phone to call. They put it on their desk and they think about it. And so it usually takes somewhere between um, four to seven days for them to actually get to the point where they pick up the phone and call. So from the time you mail them out, if I'm going to mail them out on Tuesday, the chances are it will probably be um, Friday or early the next week before I actually start getting calls back on those. But I'll be sh sharing with you what's going on and who called back and who I'm sending them to and what type of response I get from that. Now I do have a little clue on that. You know, usually you send them out the biggest ads in the newspaper are attorneys and um, and also is our attorneys and also the you know the health care with the things that people spend their discretionary income on like plastic surgeons and chiropractors are real big in the yellow pages also. But one area that's been seems to be very responsive as of late to these ads are automotive repair facilities. So just keep that in mind as you're going through this if that's something that you're going to be doing is you know, kind of mix it up and put a sprinkling out there of different industries and see you know what, who's going to call back because your area might be different. I know that here in the U.S. this gets about a 15 percent response rate. In Canada it gets over a 20 percent response rate for some reason. In the U.K. a little lower only about seven or eight percent. If you're in a different country I know Ivan said he's in South America I mean South Africa it may be you know we'll see it may be higher or lower so you just have to test that. Uh, let's see. For most of us, will we be successful if we dress super well? Um, I'm going to be. I'm not going to be dressed in a suit. I'm going to be wearing uh, golf shirts with a, a with a company logo on them uh, for the company that I'm going to that I've created that I'm going to be representing for this. And dress pants and dress shoes. I'm not wearing a suit. Um, you just want to dress professionally. Um, let's see. I've not given me a presentation for years. Any advice on getting over the fear of speaking? Yep. You just got to do it. Uh, start off with a small group first, you know, with maybe five or six people, and then work up to a larger group. Um, I'll let, you know, also, uh, with that, is you know, go if you have a Toastmasters, you can go join Toastmasters, and they'll they'll go through and help you with some tips on how to overcome that. But the more you speak, the easier it gets. I remember the first time I did a webcast. I mean, I seem to talk very easily and very freely doing this because I do webcasts two or three times a week now. I remember the first one I did; it was not quite as smooth. 
And obviously this one isn't either, but I've come to learn if it's not, so you just go through and you get through the bumps and people coughing into your microphone and all those kind of things. But it, that's what's, it's real, it's live. And the same thing happens when you're speaking in front of a group. It's real and it's live and you're just sharing information. The best way to get over fear of speaking is to just come from a place of service and the fact that you're there to help them by sharing the information and that you're not there to sell them anything. Even if you are, you still need to come from the position of you're there to help them and that will overcome it. Come from a place of service. Are your, are your posts, post-its handwritten? Yes, always handwritten. You want it to be like a note from your a friend, note from your grandma. Um, let's see, Aisha said, like you said, if we go to a meeting and there's a website person, then I need to say I do online marketing. If they do that, then I do mobile apps, et cetera, et cetera. Can we have a list of different services that we do so I can be prepared? Yeah, it really comes down to just a handful. It's mobile app, mobile marketing, social media marketing, video marketing, online marketing, search engine optimization, and that's about it. I mean, you can make up a combination of those, but that's really, I mean, you could, you could also be reputation a... Reputation management. Yeah, reputation management. Anything else? Any other, any other things? No. no. Okay, great. Reputation management. How many yellow page ads a day is your goal? Typically, 10 a day. Uh, if you send out 10 a day, uh, you'll start to get a, after a while, you'll start to get a steady flow of calls coming back in. See, the yellow pages are half the, they're half the size in London. Is the same script for Groupon, picture ads, etc.? Yes. What I mean, I yeah, put yellow page ads on here. Yeah, the, um, there's, there's a couple of different strategies with that, real quick. The first is, the other thing is, uh, here in the States, we have Valpac. And if you have a res, if you ha live in a house, which most of us do, or an apartment, or any type of structure, if you live in a building, you and you have a mailbox, you probably receive Valpac ads. You can mail those just as easily as you can Yellow Page ads, um, because they're again with that they're putting sending their information out, hoping that it gets in front of someone and they remember it when they need it. Versus online marketing, your information is in front of them whenever they're actually looking for it. The other thing is, you can take a picture of a billboard and send that to them. Uh, the other day I walked out and in my driveway there was a Ziploc bag about the size of a sandwich bag with a rock in it with a piece of paper for gutter cleaning. And it's like, okay, got your Ziploc bag in the driveway, have some ideas how you may be able to improve on this, give me a call. Um, I went to the grocery store, they have a grocery here store called, uh, called Bilo's. And it was, um, and, and there, their buggies, that's what they call them here, not shopping carts, they call them buggies. Their buggies have placards all over the side and the front of them advertising businesses. You take a picture of that and go, saw your ad on the buggy at Bilo. <laughs> That's some ideas that you may be able to improve on this. Give me a call. Any attempts at advertising. And it was one that I used as an example of. It's got, there's this big, perp, big aqua colored bus. And on purple it says, have neck or back pain? Call a call you know, equity chiropractic, blah, 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 blah. It's like, really? They're going to remember that from seeing on the big, and saw your ad on the big Barney purple and aqua colored bus. So yeah, you can send that out a number of different ways. Um, let's see, just wondering, generally speaking, do people pay you the full amount when they sign up or half or what? I heard several people mentioning getting these large checks like close to three to 5,000, which sounds like the full amount. Also, you'd be doing anything with phone apps like your presentation. Um, it depends on the business and, and the, if the phone app is the right, um, it is the right fit for them. Uh, if I'm talking with a restaurant owner or someone like that, then yeah, absolutely. I have a phone. I have mobile phone apps at my disposal. Um, well, how will I collect? Typically, I ask for everything up front because there's a lot of work that goes into getting this stuff executed. Worst case scenario, I will accept 50% at, uh, at signing of the agreement and 50% 30 days later. That's my only. That's the only concession I will make when it comes to receiving payment. Um, Lee said newspapers too, absolutely. Um, repeat the name of the ads we probably get if we live in a structure. Valpac, V-A-L-P-A-C. Matter of fact, when I came into the house last night, there was one sitting on the counter from Valpac. Uh, let's see. Got the same bag and rocks in my driveway for the gym down the street. Uh, I mean, that's their, that's, they don't know how to market. They don't, they just, they do what they think they can, they, what is the easiest way I can get someone's attention? And whenever, actually, when someone's looking for something, they're actually looking online. How important is it to know something about the industry or the company you're sending the post-it note to? No, understanding the fact that they are advertising in the yellow pages is really about the only thing that I need to know. I will do a cursory check, like if I'm sending it out to 
to dentists, I will look and see how many people are searching for dentists in Spartanburg. If I'm sending it to a personal injury attorney, I will look and see how many people are searching for personal injury attorney in Spartanburg. And that's about it. Because really with that, all you're looking to do is, you know, you're putting your ad in the yellow pages or you're putting it in the newspaper or you're sending out Valpac. You know, that's where you're putting it where you hope people see it whenever they come across it. I know that there are five to 600 people every month looking for your product or service in your city. My, my ideas are to put your information in front of those people who are actively searching for your product or service at the exact time that they're ready to buy it. Now, if I was able to do that, do you think that there's any chance that, you're, that the, your, those people would choose you over your competition? And that's about as much research as I do because I really am just trying to get their attention on looking at a different way of getting people in the door of their business. So that's what I do about that. Let's see. The dentist has a giant billboard, also nails ads. Perfect. Um, I'd like to talk to Vanessa. Let's see. Very big rep man appointment we have next week. Didn't know she does that. Can we, can I get her email address? Um, you do reputation management? <laughs> she, I think she just mentioned reputation management. Uh, oh, but the fine. thing is, is everything that the whole thing is everything with online marketing. And when you do local, that's the new buzz term that people seem to be using a lot for. So it would be a good thing to tag your keywords in <laughs> reputation management to add that to your list. Jody, today I was calling the companies to get names of the business owners I was sending the yellow pages out to. What can I do to find the right person to send? Um, I would go on uh, and in your state and put business how to find business owner's name in Tennessee. Say in Florida, we had sunbiz.org, which will tell you any business owner or a registered agent. Um, that's the, the other way is through Info USA. Um, it's kind of it's a little bit more of a lengthy way to go about doing that. But Info USA can come up with a business owner's name. There was another one that someone mentioned the other day. Hoover's. Hoover's. I mean, there's depends on what you, the, the link that you need to go to. Um, Mark says, Valpat, looking at one right now, would have gone into the trash before the mastermind meeting in LA. Yeah, Mark, I was Mark in LA a couple weekends ago, and it's a it's a perfect strategy. Oh, the other, here's a cool thing. Um, Groupon. Most people do not have a positive experience with Groupon. They print their Groupon out and say, Hey, I saw your Groupon, have some ideas how you can improve on this. But I know one guy who his strategy is he calls them up and says, Hey, we've got to act fast, but right now, do you have anything in place to capture? The information from the people who come in to use the Groupon, and usually, of course, they don't. And he goes, "Great, here's what I can do for you. We got to act fast, though. I can help you put a system in place so that you can capture the name and the phone number and the email of all those people coming into your store. Is that something that would be of interest to you?" And they're like, "Well, sure." And so then he goes about putting together a follow-up system, and we'll be talking more about that as we go through this. We go through this 30 days, but because I've got a whole philosophy that I'm going to share with you, and it's actually. Um, something I'm working on right now for another company that has to do with follow-up marketing, but a, a different a different slant on a different play on follow-up marketing. So I'll be sharing that with you as we go through this. Um, how do you handle videos for these people? Will you outsource? Do you charge extra for these or consider part of your expense? I don't have a source yet. Not sure how much this even costs. Okay, with videos, what I will do is the same thing that my beautiful wife does. She does not shoot videos. I remember the first time she went and shot videos, she broke the lights. And she called me and she goes, I am never shooting videos again. I broke these lights in the middle of the doctor's office. And so I came up with a strategy for her. She went out and hired a videographer off of Craigslist, a wedding videographer. He charged, what, $75 an hour? It's $95. $95 an hour. And still use him. Still use him. He goes, he shot two videos for two hours. So it calls her, it's rounded up to $200. And then she got someone that is a student at the School of Performing Arts to edit the videos for $10 a piece, and he got, what, like 30 videos? Mm -hmm. So $300 for the editing and $20 for the video shoot. Um, it wound up being a total of $500. Now, that's a little high because you don't need that many videos, but this is the client that she does ongoing work for, and he continues to pay her over $1,000 every month, so she releases, releases a couple of new videos each month. So. A wedding videographer typically is not very busy on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday morning. They typically not many weddings happening then, and they usually will charge you um, accordingly so that you can get by without doing that, um, without having to spend big money. You use Google AdWords to determine the number of searches. Yes, and we'll show you a little bit about that in a minute. 
Um, let's see. All right. Um, let's see how much for the product. I haven't created the product yet. I'm working on it. Um, and um, Ivan, if you, the question that you have on the coaching, just send me a, an email on that. I'm sure you have it. Um, if not, it's Jody at JodyOverhill.com. Um, Manta, you can also ask also Manta and UK. Um, and Manta has a business on her list. Okay, there you go. <coughs> Moving right along. So what I'm going to do now is, I mean, that's really, I don't want to overload you with everything of every step of every item I'm going to go through and do. Plus, that's all the slides that I put together. But I do have a couple of guests here that do want to share some information because a lot of people have been asking specific questions about how do you go about determining what you're going to do or how do you find the information. So now the first person I'm going to turn this over to, and I'm still going to be here and I'll be making comments and I'm going to, I'm, going to, um, I'm not going anywhere until we actually wrap this thing up. So in looking at it, the next thing is I'm going to introduce you to Vanessa Underhill. That's right. She's my wife, lucky woman that she is. Uh, she's our research and outsourcing diva. And she's going to go through and share with you. <laughs> well, really? Yeah. Okay. She's going to go through and she's share with you um, some of the, I, the some of the things that she does when she does research on clients. And I'm going to actually trade seats with you so that you can look at the questions as they come up. You can scroll right up. And then I'm going to sit in her chair and call up into the microphone. <laughs> I'll probably still do that. Okay. Hey, everyone. Um, I just want to see real quick, because I know a lot of the stuff Jody's been saying, um, you've heard before, um, if you're in some of the coaching programs and heard him speak before, but I kind of wanted to see where everyone was, if you could just type in your box um, and let me know who hasn't got their first client yet. If you could just type in. Don't say their names. I'm not going to say their names. <laughs> I just want to know who hasn't got their first client yet, because that's really why we're doing the 30-day challenge. <laughs> you can say my name. Say my name. <laughs> say my name, please. <laughs> okay. A lot of people here. A lot of people, a lot of brand new people. And that's kind of why we're doing this because I know when you get in these um, programs, there's a lot of information. You have a lot of products you want to learn, um, how to sell it, where to go, everything else. And so why we're doing this is to basically set it up so everybody can kind of follow along step by step and to make it as simple as possible so you know you'll be able to get that first client and that's what our whole goal is with this so what um, what I'm going to talk about a little bit right now is the research that you do um, for the first client now when you go into these events because I'm sure some of you are going to do the networking events the thing that helps me the most I don't know if any of anybody is on here has been to the Chamber of Commerce, Commerce events but they kind of break you off into like a group they give you a number when you walk in the door one through seven and then about an hour into the thing they'll say okay all the threes go here all the fours go there wherever um, and then you get over into these groups well the thing that I have said from the beginning and this is literally um, because Jody everybody knows Jody was my coach um, when I get broken off into the group, you know, if you sit in there and say, yeah, I do social media or I do videos or, you know, it's not very exciting. I mean, as far as that, you know, nobody, I mean, I don't think it is. I mean, when I've heard it, well, you do, whatever. But I don't. So what I say to people, literally, and I literally almost immediately get cards passed to me, is I will say to people, well, you know how, just what Jody said, I kind of go, you know, changed a little bit, but you know how everybody has a website. Well, everybody wants to be on the front page of Google. Everybody knows that if you're not on the front page of Google, no one's going to find your business. So what I do is I help um, companies get multiple front page listings. So not only is their website on the front page, but they have video, sometimes Facebook is on the front page, local directory listings, um, just multiple front page listings. So what, whenever someone is looking for that specific product, they're going to find four to six front page listings and that seems to really peak interest um, because when you can say you know we and I have and I have samples I can you know and I I can show you and usually I'm 
literally flipping out my iPhone and showing them right there on the spot um, when they get done with the everybody else saying what they do. So um, that's a lot more impressive than saying, hey, I do social media or I do videos or... Well, what, but here's a question though. Uh -huh. That's great you have examples. If you're brand new and like I'm going into Spartanburg, I don't have examples. What do you suggest I do? Well, what I tell all the people that work with me on my outsourcing is you can use my examples. <clears throat> and I direct them to show them examples, you know, because it's not, I mean, you can show this is what we can do. Because technically they can do that. If they do exactly the step-by-step -step structure of how to get the content out, then they can use those as an examples. And I have various people that use it right now, um, clients that use it right now that do not have business, but they've sold some on you know, from the vein clinic I do, or the um, jewelers, or, I'm sorry, I'm reading that, or, um, you know, the restaurant, or whatever, you know, I mean, whatever samples they need, they can use, and that's what I used at the beginning. I used your sample from, I guess it was the West Palm Beach Financial Planner, you know, and it wasn't my sample. It was something. Hey, don't give my stuff away. It wasn't mine, but I, I said this is this is what I this is what we can do. I didn't say it was mine. I said this is what we can do. We get multiple front page listings, and um, usually that alone will pique interest at the event. I mean, it always has for me. So, anyways. Um, so what is am I visible? What what is that about? Okay, am I visible dot org. This is pretty much free. Um, you can go in here and type in. Does it pull? I mean, does the mouse work? Does anything, or does it matter? Right here. Oh, I got a PC. Okay, so basically, this is a real easy way. Um, when someone calls you or mentions they have their business or they want to do something with you, um, you can go ahead and put their business phone number. This and hit "Am I visible." What it'll do, and it's not going to show because I don't have it up here right now. This is a slide. What it'll do is it'll actually show you real quick the what customers they're reaching, what customer base they're reaching. It'll also show you their competition. It'll show you the keywords that um, them and their competition are using and how they rank and what page it's on. And then it will show the directory listings that you're in or not in. And this is really good because what happens sometimes is when you pull up their website and you're trying to figure out um, you know, what their keywords are, I mean, yeah, they might have a business where they do multiple things in it. So when you're trying to figure out what the best keywords are, you can sometimes look in their um, website and discover that. But if you put them in here in Am I Visible, it'll actually pull some of the top keywords that even if they're not ranking for them, their local competitors will be ranking for them, and you can actually pull those off of there and use those for research um, for their keywords. And that is what we use Am I Visible for. Now we start with Am I Visible, and I'll do that real quick. So basically, if someone calls you on the phone, usually what I do is if they call, um, Usually you try to set the meeting if it's just a you know quick call or whatever. I always try to you know set a meeting for a later time because you don't want to get. I know even though you might not have one client yet, <laughs> you don't want to sit there. Oh yeah, I can talk to you right now. You know, like I'm available always because I have nobody. Um, so what you want to do is you want to set an appointment time to get back when you can have about 15 minutes to sit and talk to them. And so when they call back, usually I go through, you know, what they do, how long they've been in business. I might grab their website the first time they call. Um, well, just give me your website real quick and then schedule the 15-minute appointment. But when they call back, um, you know, what they do, how long they've been in business, um, what their current marketing is, how it's working and what, what their budget is. And you don't have to really get into budget if you don't feel comfortable. But sometimes I try, it depends on how the conversation's going. I try to kind of figure that out. But I mean, if you kind of know that, if they're like, oh, well, we've got a full yellow page ad, we run the newspaper every week, we're on the radio, you can find kind of figure out they have a um, sizable budget. But if you can get that, um, some people are very open and they're great, they'll give it to you. Um, then, of course, website domain, if you haven't already got that from the first call. 
go into their social media if they're into any video work directories always try to find out who their competition is and very important I find out what their high-end product or services what they want to sell the most of so like I have one doctor that does um, varicose veins spider veins he also does lipos tumescent liposuction um, he does laser care so his higher end um, products are usually the liposuction and the vein treatments and so you know we kind of wanted to go after those first we went after varicose vein and spider vein first and because like if it's not like just a plumber for say I know they do different things with the plumber but with this doctor he does like 20 different things so as far as going after and targeting keywords we kinda had to start with a few you know but with like a plumber you know I would assume that you know three to five good strong keywords you could get to start with and the reason why you're getting those is because when you do your keyword research you want to be able to see you know what the best terms are to go after first who's looking um, who, what has the most m number of searches every month so that being said um, am I visible is what we start with first can make this go make it go Oops. <clears throat> bear with us while I make it go <laughs> also another thing we started using within the last month it's very affordable, um, you know, and Chris, Christian's going to go over how to use it in a minute here with you, but localsearchtool.org. And when you sign up, you can see up here with the white label, this right here, you can go in there, and I think they give you 50 credits or 30 credits to start. 30. 30. 30. Yeah, they give you 30 credits to start. And they do, um, in some future slides, um, you'll be able to see what they do, but they do some really great reports. And so what you can use when these people call and, you know, you have your initial um, call with them and everything, you can run, run the report, you know, before you have your more extensive call. And then if you make a meeting, these reports are really nice because you can take them in. And these ones right here, they actually grade them on their web presence analysis. So, you know, it gives them an A through F and it, it goes through a lot of stuff um, with those. So... Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, so it's really good. So I I usually typically start with this one, and I run the report, the initial report on lo localsearchtool.org. Now after we do that, there's also Bright Local, and it has a really good report too. It's thirty four ninety nine a month for so many reports, or you can start out basic nineteen ninety nine. But it's really good at using um, searching, being able to go through it and running reports on status. It lists uh, quite different um, from the A through F grade that uh, localsearchtool.org does. But what I use Bright Local for is they have in this software, which localsearchtool.org doesn't have, you can run, you can actually load a client. So say you meet with someone and you've ran their localsearchtool.org, they've got an F, but they're just kind of, you know, not closing or you're having problems. Well, the next thing you do is go ahead if you think, well, I just want to keep in touch with this person. You load them into Bright Local, um, and they have a place where you can load them into a monthly report. So what happens is you've had your meeting with them, they didn't close. However, in about 30 days, they're going to get a report from Bright Local, and it's just going to remind them how crappy you know, they basically, they, I don't want to say suck, but that's what we say, you know, hey, you suck still, you know, and so what will happen is every 30 days or whatever. My wife, you got to love her. Every, every, every time, um, at once a month or whatever you set it for, they'll get a report that shows them, hey, you're, you know, you don't rank, you still don't rank, hey, guess what, you still don't rank, and it's going to be a reminder, you know, and kind of keep them in your, funnel there and that maybe hey we've had it where someone's come back three months later and said yeah I can do it now you know um so I don't think they said yeah I can do it now they said yeah I have to do it now. yeah well whatever yeah <laughs> but you know so it's, it's really good and I just think 
these two tools are really, um, and if you look at these and you can, you know, go through them, and, and um, Christian's going to show you how to read them in a minute here, but if you kind of get a grasp on these, they're very, very powerful um, for closing. Just really, really awesome tools. And what's the last thing you have here? I don't want to do that one. Either. Okay, I can skip it. <clears throat> yeah, because that's another whole day. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to we'll get to the part that now they're like, going. What the hell is it? What are you not showing us? No, it's what so she's hard. not showing. Here's what I'll just real quickly. What she's not showing you is we're going to do a whole section on this, and she's already done one, one time. We're going to get it's when it you get a little rushed, when, it was rushed, when you and, after this isn't about when you first meet someone anyway. This is like after you're doing research and you you're, you've kind of landed them as a client. This is how you go through and determine what keywords that you actually need to start looking at ranking. You can determine if the video, if you can get a video ranked or you can get their website ranked or what you need to do in order to get ranking done. So <clears throat> we're going to just tease you with this now to let you know there will be more to come. And so if, you, if, you, if you're the red, yellow, green spreadsheet type person, which I can assure you and promise you I am not. So I can, I can promise you I have never used this spreadsheet in my entire online marketing life, I get people that do like to do that to do it for me? Well, well the reason being is is because it shows you, if you, you know, I, I have people with our outsourcing that'll, hey, I got you, I, I've got a client, I've closed a client, and the reason why we've got this together and started using it again, truthfully, is because of the new people, they would tell someone, yeah, I can get you the front page and all this stuff, and then they, they give me the stuff to do, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like one of the hardest niches. Um, in the world, and it's a lot more of a long-term strategy. Yeah, it might take us three to four months or six months to get them to the front page, but it's going to be a little while. It's not going to be like, hey, in two weeks we can get you there. So um, that's why we've started using this again um, for, and it's it's really good. It actually um, breaks it down so terms that people think, oh yeah, I can rank for that, and then once they run the so run this, they're like, okay, there's no way. And we did a webinar that was really, really bad, and I was on it, and it was kind of a last-minute thing for me, and we had to go to, I don't even know, we were going to San Diego or something. So I Actually, I was in San Diego. You were here, but you were flying out the next morning. Yes, yeah, so it was totally I gave chaos. her like 30 minutes notice, hey, I need you to get on this webcast with me. And I sounded like a derelict, so when we, <laughs> when we can sit down and go through this and do it and do it right, it, it just makes everything flow. I mean, you'll just be able to know exactly. You'll be able to look at a field and say, yeah, I can rank for this. Um, we can do this easy, no problem, because Jody... Anyways, um, and you'll be able to do that and feel confident with it. Okay, and someone's saying, um, can we have access examples to show? Yes, Jody, email Jody and he'll email me or whatever, yeah. and we'll get you those samples. Or you can go to theogirls.com. Yeah, fill in the, go into my website, theogirls.com, and put just fill out the um, contact form thing. And um, so I'll contact you. I'll, I'll give you samples to give out because it's worked great for people. <clears throat> You need to get the person's permission before setting up Bright Local to send them their reports. Well, well, you don't. I mean, you don't have to get their permission. I mean, in that sense, I mean, you just—it's something you've already met with them, and you've already done that. They can stop them at any time, basically. You know, it doesn't. It's not really something like that. It just basically gives them a free report that shows them what their status. <clears throat> and another one was: Do you have any suggestions how to show an example without a mobile phone? Oh, you don't even need. Um, you could just take. Um, print screens. Um, and I don't even do that. I, and he doesn't even do that, but you can take print screens. Um, you know, I have some people that just use paper because, you know, sometimes you get there, the Wi-Fi is not working, you know. Right, but you, what you, the reference to that was you said that you show that to people at networking events. You're not going to carry a bot a room of paper. Oh, okay, no, you. no, no. You just mentioned that you can get them first page. Well, yeah, you don't have to, to show. You don't have to show, but what you could do with that one, if you don't have a mobile phone or whatever, what I would do is I would say, you know what? Um, I don't have my um, iPad here. I don't have my um, computer here, but let's meet for coffee, and I can show you exactly, you know, show you all this. And that way, because you know, you can't really. I mean, sometimes you don't have time to show everything. I'm going to punch you, I swear. <laughs> this is so much fun. If only you could all be here with us right if now. If only everybody could work with their spouse. It's so fabulous. <laughs> and I'm not demanding at all. No, not at all. Anyways, but whatever. Okay, so what are you going to do next? <laughs> okay, so basically, um, please repeat the name. 
Well, I'll, you are I'll talk awesome. it in, I'll type it in the chat box over here. Oh, here's a bunch. Here. Okay. When I use, do you need to get the part now? What's that one right there? I noticed that they use keywords that are not used by my client's target audience. How do you get outsourcing team to use the keywords you recommended? Well, the thing is, is that why are you recommending those keywords? If they're saying it's not the it's not used by the client's target audience. How do you know that it's not? Are there no searches for the keywords that they're recommending? Um, so that's that's kind of a very broad um, question. But really, you have to look at them because if you're you want a certain keyword, if there's 20 million results and the competition is high and there's 50,000 searches, it's probably not the best keyword to go after because it'll take forever to get there. And whenever the outsourcer is looking at what is the best keyword, they're looking at keywords that have lower competition but still have a, a, a larger a large number of searches in order for it to be relevant. So it's probably a lot more detailed than we have time to get into. And the thing is, is you, you, you can make them do whatever you want to, but that doesn't mean that you'll get results. Right. And the longer, and when you're dealing with keywords, you know, a lot of people think, you know, just the regular keywords like varicose vein surgery in, for example, but you want to you want to do longer tail keywords sometimes if it's a very highly competitive niche. You can keep talking. Okay. Uh, uh, what you're doing. I'm typing in your URL. Okay. Anyways, but, um, yeah, so the, and, you know, I don't, once you learn, I, we're going to have a seminar on this, I mean, well, whatever you call this, a webinar, and um, I don't usually do these. Jody does them all the time, but I never do these. But we're going to have one, and we're going to take it and go through it, um, and so you'll be, like, experts on how to look up keywords and know with confidence what you can rank for or get your team to rank for for right. you. And Eileen says, actually, I wanted to use keywords on a lower competitive niche. Then you just tell them, I want these keywords. And if they don't do that, then you find someone else to go. So <clears throat> that's the answer to that. So are you going to have anything else? No, I think I'm good. You sure. I think you did a great job. Everybody, if you could type in the chat box, clap, 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 so that she can show that she knows that she did good. All right. Because <clears throat> I'm going to yell at her after we hang up anyway. So. <laughs> Actually, I don't. She pinches really hard. And now I'm going to introduce you to the other part of our this the, our trio here. And his name is Christian. Um, go ahead and I'll let you take. Christian, yeah. Okay, you do it. Christian. Okay, so everybody gets worried about competition and everything. And who's your competition in the area? Well, Christian, actually, this these videos kept popping up under mine or sometimes above mine and everything and I'm like who is this person doing this with video Popping up above and below you oh, on, on the... page one on the front page I'm sorry on the page one and I was like who is this who knows about this stuff and it was so funny I literally the day the next day after I started to notice this um, I got a LinkedIn message or a phone call I don't remember which let's do lunch and it happened to be Christian and um, we're going to talk in a second. And he um, is amazing at SEO and everything. So now we, we do things. My competition, there is no competition because we work together now. So, um, But he's amazing at this. So he's, he's gone through all the stuff, um, local search tool and bright local. And he's more techie and analytical and everything else. But he's going to go through and explain all this good stuff to you. Hey guys, this is Christian Jackson, and uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, and uh, you know, first off, I want to tell you a little bit about me uh, and and what I do. My business uh, it was solely based on uh, before I met Vanessa was solely based on uh, SEO. And so what I would do is uh, go to a prospect, uh, and they would um, you know need their website ranked, obviously. And so I would do everything with SEO. And uh, I did want to point out too, like that Jody said earlier, partners in awareness, which is you know how I look at it right now too, because I remember uh, kind of thinking of it as like a battle when me and Vanessa were kind of <laughs> <laughs> we were kind of battling it out, um, you know, trying to to outrank each other for a certain uh, keyword term. Um, and then I you know I started learning about co-promotion, um, which you know no matter what kind of you know marketing type business that you're you're going to do. You know, just keep marketing in your mind all the time, even if it's just SEO. Always keep it uh, in your mind, and I'll, I'll go over some of that uh, as as well. Um, and I did want to give you a little for everybody who's just starting out uh, and, and may not be uh, completely familiar with SEO. I wanted to give you an SEO term 
of the day, and that is uh, SERPS, and that is spelled S-E-R-P-S, -E and so that stands for Search Engine Results Pages. Uh, now, uh, I did uh, mention this. I asked someone if they knew what SERPs were. Uh, and I said, I said, what does that have to do with pancakes? <laughs> and he, thought it, he, uh, said, he said, how many different types We didn't of know what SERPs were. Put it that I was way. Like, how many, I don't only like one kind of SERP on my pancakes. <laughs> I don't need more than one. Yeah, I wasn't going to say anyone's name, but he's already, <laughs> he's already pointed They out. know, Chris. So, <laughs> so, um, so moving on here. Uh, the first thing uh, that I wanted to talk about was the Bright Local, um, which Vanessa mentioned earlier. And Bright Local is a very robust report uh, that, that uh, you can send to clients that covers a whole lot. Um, and we have another option as well um, that, that you'll be able to use that I'll be sharing in a second uh, too. And so this is the off-site SEO analysis. And I don't have all of the, the, the reports here are so... Uh, robust and valuable uh, to to you and really to anyone who's a prospect that I don't have all the slides on here. I could probably talk for, for five hours about it. So I'm just going to give you a basic uh, overview of what you'll be able to, to send to a prospect and be able to show to them. And another thing to remember is, it, you know, because a lot of you may be nervous about, you know, well, I don't really know much about um, SEO at all and, you know, I don't know any, any terms or, or anything like that. And that's okay. And, and remember that you're gonna some clients you'll you'll just be able to use like terms and and talk to them with with basic ideas like ranking their their site on the first page um, and uh, you know if if they're not ranking at all which usually they're not going to be uh, if 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 they have an SEO company working for them already they're probably you know they wouldn't be interested in you in the first place so most of the time the odds are going to be stacked uh, in your favor uh, to to close a client. And, you know, I think that Jody mentioned that he doesn't, you know, take anything with him when he's going to sit down with a prospect. Uh, I, in the past, have not taken anything with me uh, at all. I'm, you know, I just sit down, it's me, I have a notepad, and that's it. But, you know, you got to keep in mind that some people uh, are better when, when are going to close better and, and will understand what you're trying to get across to them better if they have something to look at. And others, you'll just be able to talk to them. And, and really, I think that I probably could have, uh, landed, uh, you know, more clients if I would have had something at least to, to show the people who who just learn better that way and, and understand better that way. Um, so with the off-site SEO analysis, um, what that is generally talking about is just where uh, they're ranking in the SERPs. If you guys remember that, write that down, the search engine results pages. So that just means like the first page of Google. Uh, where they're ranking, uh, a lot of times there'll be uh, other types of analysis as well. Uh, Give me one second here. I'm going to move on to the next slide here. Um, you'll get a ranking report, and you'll see below. This is going to show you. Um, Can you move this down? Do they see that box? I don't, I don't see the yeah, question. Just move that down. Give me just one second here. <coughs> just slide the question box now. I am trying. <laughs> it's not going That's All right, so, so this is just a basic layout. Of, and you can see here uh, where this business is. Uh, less than, uh, you, you know, they're not ranking at all for their uh, search terms. Um, and so you could, excuse me here, my mouth's getting dry. Um, so this would be something that you'd want to present to them, obviously, because they're going to they're gonna sit there and, and, and say, well, um, well, yeah, I'm not ranking there. I need to get to the first page. And then you can usually get them to type in uh, their, um, their keyword that they're looking for and see the, the, the competitors there. And then you can say to them, hey, do you want to be right there with your competitors? Well, guess what? I can get you there. Uh, and, and you'll be able to, to uh, you know, again, have something to show to them. Uh, and and another thing I like to say to clients is I'm going to be able to get, uh, you know, the phone ringing and the door swinging for you. And that's just like a catchy saying that they like. Usually, uh, you know, they'll, they'll start laughing. Um, and some, some other... Uh, things that you can keep in mind and things that you can say is that 85% um, of anyone who is looking for any type of service or business is going to be using Google, okay? And uh, just to, to give you an idea of how important it is to be on the first page in Google uh, and, and also Yahoo and Bing uh, is that Yahoo gets about 15% of local search queries 
or, or really even global queries. Uh, so anything anyone is searching for, 15% of people are going to use Yahoo. And another 15% are going to use Bing when they do the searches. And Google is the mammoth, the 800-pound gorilla in the room that gets 70% of the search queries. So you're talking about billions of queries coming through Google all the time. I think that uh, I read a statistic, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I think it was somewhere near like 30,000 queries uh, per minute, or it may have even been more than that. I mean, it's just an insane amount of, of people uh, all over the planet using Google to find anything that they need. And, and you know, local business is obviously a huge part of that. Um, and here's another little interesting fact that you can use uh, to explain to them how important it is to be on the first page. And that is, and, and I looked this up last night just to be sure, um, Flooring Atlanta brought up 2.5 million results. And there were only 26 of those on the first page. So that would put that any business, if they're not on the first page, that would give them a 0.0001% chance of being found. So really, you're not going to be found if you're not on the first page uh, of Google. Uh, and also, as far as the phone book goes, you know, and that's an, another good thing about uh, using those phone book ads, is that usually it's only 65 uh, years, uh, people who are 65 years old and older who are using the phone book now. Everyone else is using Google anytime they need to find something. Um, so those are some just some other uh, you know ideas uh, that you can use when you're sitting down with a prospect for the first time. All right, give me just one second here. Just to figure out how to use a trackpad. Well, yeah, I can do yeah. SEO. But these these Apple trackpads are, are a real challenge. That's right? what it's like using a real computer. Yeah. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm actually attending a webinar on how to use the, these trackpads. The, the, one that has, the one that he has looks like an Etch-a-Sketch. <laughs> okay. Um, and so, uh, moving on here, uh, now we're looking at uh, your, your on-site SEO report. And so, these are just your, your page titles uh, and, and the content that's on your site. A lot of times, um, images uh, on your client's website or your prospect's uh, website rather um, will not be optimized and um, one way that that you can optimize uh, a client's website or have their webmaster rather usually they'll have a webmaster that can do it themselves a lot of times uh, uh, the, the prospect will have built their website themselves and so it's real easy to go in and even if you're not uh, able to make you know tons of, of changes uh, to their site. You can make very small changes uh, just by following some of the uh, instructions that you'll see in the in the Bright Local reports. Uh, also another good thing about Bright Local is that they have uh, great training videos that will give you a layout uh, that I don't have time to cover everything here obviously but they'll, they'll give you a good layout and good understanding of basic on-page SEO. Uh, another place that I recommend to go uh, and, and you guys get your pen and paper ready if you want to learn about good on-page SEO, I'd recommend going to seomoz.com. Uh, and that is seomoz.com. Thanks for that, Jody. Um, and uh, what you can do, uh, another really easy way to, to find this, I think if you just go to Google and you type um, on-page SEO 101, SEO Moz, it will bring up probably several uh, good and very uh, robust and inf informative uh, um, articles and blog posts about uh, on-page SEO that you can read that can just give you a you know basic overview so you're not intimidated uh, when you go to to talk to uh, a prospect about it for the first time. Um, and so here this shows uh, your, your page count here, page titles, uh, your description, the, the keywords, and I would recommend just making sure that you have, at, making sure that your client has at least some of the keywords they're trying to rank for at least one time uh, in um, their their content, or at least have it some something like, you know, it doesn't have to be a keyword phrase per se. Excuse me, um, but you would want it to be um, like if you're looking for the best air conditionings in Greenville, SC, then you have come to the right place. Um, and one other thing that you'll want to put in the content for them, and this is a marketing uh, um, tip for you, 
for any business and a lot of times a business does not know what their USP is. If you don't know what a USP is, that is your unique sales proposition. Um, and so as an online marketer, you'll want to have one of those. Really any business should have a USP. A lot of times they won't even know what it is. Um, and it's really easy to, to help them find something that's unique about them. Uh, for instance, um, I had a, a client one time and I was, they, they said, well, I don't even know what that is. I've never even heard of that. And so they're like, we don't think that we're really unique at all. Um, and it was actually um, a fire prevention company. Um, and I was like, well, what? tell me about the people who you have working here. And she's like, well, I've got this guy who's working here. He's been working here for 10 years, and he's a former firefighter. Well, a lot of the other fire prevention companies uh, were like big conglomerates and just had people coming out that were just looking around, you know, and, and didn't really care about the, the business or the job that they were doing. They're just people collecting a paycheck. At this job, you had a firefighter who has seen the, the pain that fires have brought to business owners who didn't have proper uh, fire protection and fire prevention. So then we used that in their content and had good results with that as well. Um, so it's just, you know, you know, write that down to USP. That, that's probably something else that you want to look up. You can just Google that unique sales proposition if you want to get uh, a better uh, understanding of that. A lot of times if you can share something like that with a client, um, or excuse me, with a prospect, uh, then, you know, it, it really gives them uh, a feeling like you, you, you know what's going on, you understand them. Uh, and Make they, it more human. Yeah. And then, then you're trying to sell them something. You're actually trying to, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Thanks for that. There you go. All right. And moving on here. All right. So this is the uh, content and link review here. Um, and links are extremely important for SEO. Really, that's where uh, most of the power is uh, when it comes to getting uh, a website ranked uh, for everyone who's new um, to, to SEO here. So your outbound links, um, if, you know, we've got it listed right here if you can't read it. These are just clickable links from your website out to other sites. Um, so it's good to have, you know, tips or, or some kind of, um, like, resource, like kind of, I just... I just shared with you guys SEO Moz. So if I had an SEO website where you know I wanted to um, offer good uh, SEO tips to businesses who maybe could do some SEO themselves, I might have an article linking out to SEO Moz. You know, if you're at, uh, you know, depending on what type of business it is, like for instance, the fire prevention company might have an outbound link linking to an authority site about fire prevention and things that you can do that you may not think of uh, to prevent a fire at a person's business. Um, and the internal links are uh, links uh, that connect pages on your site to each other. Um, and you can use links to tell Google a lot about the content of your site. So for instance on the home page um, you might have a page that has your own tips that you share uh, on there. So you can have that listed as a keyword like click here to learn more about tips on fire prevention. That would go to um, you know the other page. You wouldn't want to have something that just says uh, click here, uh, you know, you'd want to have something that's actually in the, the text. So, of the, the link. so this right here, basically up here, they basically don't have any, they're zero. So this is a bad, right? Uh, yeah, well, that's that's the keywords on, on visible on the page. I'm saying they don't have a lot. Right. None, basically. Right. And their primary location. And their primary keyword in the page title, none. Right. You know, so they basically, this can kind of show them that they need some work. Exactly. Yeah, okay. and, and that they can list, uh, they can do a little bit better job uh, with their their keyword placement um, on their website. Um, this is the local directory listing report, um, and we've got here. You know, these are just some of the local directories that they they may or may not be listed on. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. These sites, uh, you know, any of these sites that they are listed on could uh, possibly generate a lead for them. And if it generates a lead for them, it could generate a phone call and then a prospect. And then guess what that means? That means money in your client's wallet. That means money in their uh, bottom line. And it helps with ranking, too, if they're all optimized. Yeah, it, it does. And like I was saying before, um, if, if they have citations um, and, uh, you know, they have links uh, on there as well, uh, then that's going to help with their rankings to get to the first page because that's what Google uses to measure uh, who's, um, whose authority is, is there. Um, and 
I'll, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and real quickly here, um, your social media report. This is another thing that's become more and more uh, important in the search engines. Um, so ha making sure that a client, if, if a client, or excuse me, if a prospect doesn't have a Facebook button or a Google Plus button or a tw Twitter button or even Twitter account, that's definitely something that, that they need to have to help with their rankings. Um, and lastly, I'm going to share with you uh, another um, report really briefly here. Um, no, that's that's the one we use. That's the one I was telling them to use when they first. This is the one where, guys, you can get 30 free reports if you sign up for it and white label it. And this is what you can use to take to them. Which one was that? Localsearchtool.org. Um, this is kind of, it makes it easier. I mean, I love the other one too, Bright Local, because it's got a lot of information. But this kind of A, B, C, D, F, everybody knows that, you know, <laughs> from school. So they kind of get that. But I'm sorry, Christian. Anyways, go ahead. Sure, no problem. Someone asked, um, Lois asked, uh, you missed what site that was. That was Bright Local that I was going over. Now we're going over, it was brightlocal.com. And now I'm going to briefly go over um, localsearchtool.org real quick. Um, so a couple people asked about that, um, and these can be white labeled. You can put your own logo uh, on them as well. Um, the, and really quickly, the the Google search term, how you can learn about SEO, uh, S E O M O Z. That was S E O Moz, and then you can type in on page SEO 101. Just Google that, and you'll ha ha see several options come up. Uh, offering you some r real good on-page SEO uh, resources that you can learn about that. Um, and real quickly, uh, I only have a second here to go over this with you, but you can see here, this was just a little bit uh, simpler. I don't have every single slide here, but it's just got, it's it's a little more um, aesthetically easy to understand. It's got their business and then associated with it is a D right there. Usually it's going to be an F. Um, there's someone who's done a little bit of work here. Uh, you know, to, They're to, brand to, do new. These, to do these uh, directories, um, but even a D is not something that someone wants to be associated with their business. Everybody wants to be an A. Um, here you've got uh, your search engine uh, ranking placements for the, the keywords they're trying to rank for. We've got Google, Yahoo, and Bing here. Um, right now they're not ranking, but very soon uh, if someone is doing uh, SEO the right way, then, then they will be. Um, and finally here, um, we've got the competition citation comparison. And so here's a, another good point where you can talk about, well, look, here's your competition right here. Here's what they're doing. A lot of times, their competition may be doing better than they are. And so that's another great point to emphasize uh, when, when uh, trying to you know, go over and trying to sell the client. Right, because those are, I mean, with that, they can see exactly where, they're, where they wind up in a percentage in a score. And there's no refuting that. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that, that shows them very easily and very quickly. Mm -hmm. So if you go back to that, so for instance, Architectural Heating and AC Incorporated is really sucking wind right now. And if they're trying to compete with one hour, one hour air conditioning and heating or Carolina Air Care or General Air Conditioning Service Corporation or for that matter, anyone on the page, they're probably getting less results from online marketing than anyone else is. And so it would be a very easy con conversation to be able to share with them and show them this isn't this isn't anything I've created. Matter of fact, you can go and, and see this for yourself. Yeah. So great. Thank you, Christian. I appreciate that. So Thank you. hopefully that was you know, that was helpful. I didn't want to kind of go we don't want to go too in depth. We're going to be doing that as we go through this the rest of the time. Um, and let me see if there's any questions that have come in since then. Um, can you white label bright local also? Yes. Yes, you can. Um, let's see. Do you have the sites send reports direct Vanessa, do you have sites send reports directly to your prospects or do they come directly from you? Right. Well, I do the reports, the initial report through localsearchtool.org. I do that one and, you know, show it to them or email it or whatever I'm going to do. But bright local, you can just set them up for that reoccurring monthly one. Uh, can we get them to an A and use this to show improvement? Oh yes, you can. You can definitely, um, as as time goes on, the more stuff you do and the more work. But it's not going to happen in a month. It's not going to happen in two months. It's going to be, and you you don't need to show them. Hey, I took you from F to A. It's going to go from an F to but, a D. But the bright local, I like instead of following up with the local search tool dot org, the you can show that like six months later or something. But the bright local will show 
of moving up because um, we didn't get into all that because it shows you like your listing number 19. Well, 19 is about page two, I think. So, you know, it'll show little red and green arrows moving them up and, you know, where they're going with the search terms. So that would be a good thing to show them. Right. And right now what I've got to do is because I have to go figure out exactly where it even is because people are, how are we going to find this information? Where is the recording going to be? So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to jump over here to Firefox and I want to go to Google because this is the only way I know how to find my blog. This is retarded, I know, but here we go. Put Jody Underhill in and hit enter. And there it is right there. So I'm going to hit enter on that so that I can put this into the toolbar. And so there's nothing here for the 30-day challenge yet. That's going to be posted there. After this gets wrapped up, we're going to change it. Put the first thing that's going to be there is this webcast. And then on Monday, we'll be uh, also go ahead and post because people ask for it. I'll also go ahead and post. Um, put that in there. I'll also go ahead and post the the video of me giving a prep with the over the overview for local marketing. I'll post a link to that there as well in the blog, so that you all have access to that. And then everyone that's on here, you signed up in at the 30 days to 30k. Um, website so that you are on that list and now I'm that will I'll be sending you the updates with links to the updates whenever I post a new video so that you don't have to go hunting for it you'll receive an email from me every time that I post a new video update for the 30 days to 30k so with that let me see if there's anything else I said thanks Christian awesome content guys um, so, local search tool is not available in Canada is there anything that could that could work there I don't know what to look. We'll have to find that out for you, Patrick. I'm not sure that that's what you get for living in Canada. So, but everybody <laughs> needs to plan. <laughs> everybody needs to plan because Jody's starting next next week at the chamber. Um, especially people that has not that have not made a sale yet. You need to plan um, to go to your chamber next week and do exactly what he said. And when you go to these networking events, um, before you even join it, if you go to a networking event, go there having, don't go under pressure, stress, or anything else. Go there having fun. Go to the one where they serve alcohol for free. <laughs> no. Um, but just, you know, go there and just. It's not called net drink. It's called <laughs> net work. I know. I know. Would you take a, would you take no, a glass of wine is, to a business meeting? Okay. Yes, yes I would. would. <laughs> Anyways, but the thing is, is you just need to go and, um, you know, just go to it and, you know, use the thing like I said or what Jody says, you know, to kind of get their attention. Collect business cards. Do the, it's not that hard. I mean, it's exactly, I did exactly what he said to do in 27,000 in the first six weeks of business. And it wasn't anything special, you know. And, and they have these webinars and people, well, I'm, I need to learn something new or we need to do it a new way. No, this is the way that worked. It worked for him in 2009. It worked for me in 2011 when I started. And it works. I mean, we, we have students that do it all the time, and you know, all the time. So just get out there and don't make it so complicated. Matter of fact, we have we have students that entered the program six weeks ago mm -hmm. who have already contracted Vanessa and have already sent her payments to get started on new clients that they've already landed. So. Um, and it's, and it's, so it, and it's, we're trying to get the fast track so you can literally get out there and get started and not go through all the crap we had to go through when we started it, basically. Yeah, and, and I wanted to say too that O Girls is definitely covers uh, everything in those reports and will improve everything in those reports that, that you looked at. So it's a great solution. Yeah. Christian, Christian uses us. Christian, Christian uses us, and also he's just hoping to one day get to be an O girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh God! <laughs> Only if you bring the cert. <laughs> the cert page page. I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> All right, uh, Lisa said yes, ma'am. Jody, that's pretty funny from Canada. Uh, what will the next webinar be? Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific? Uh, no. Pacific. <laughs> Pacific. Uh, no, actually at 10 a.m. Pacific, I'll probably still be at the chamber. Um, uh, be, uh, the webinars will probably be every, the following week. It'll be the following week LA. because we're, we're heading to L.A. at the end of next week. We'll do it early the following week. But the videos will be posted on the blog of what I'm doing every day that I'm going and doing an activity and the result at the end of the day of what happened from that activity so that you have updates and are able to follow that. But you will be getting a notification a couple of, well in advance of when we do the next webinar. Yes, we're all going to LA. 
Jody, yeah. Christian, and me, we're all yeah. going to LA to work. So. Yeah, we're going for overall training. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, let's see. So you learned a lot today. Let's see. Lee says, I have a person who has contacted me that she is interested in what I do. What is the best way to go about this? I'm assuming that you mean that she contacted you because she's interested in what you do because she wants you to do that for her. In that case, you go and you go through and you ask the questions um, about their business, uncovering what their needs are and what they're looking to have happen, and build the case for them to sell back to you why it would be beneficial for their information to show up on the first page of the SERPs, of the search, of the search engine ranking pages, and also why if you should have uh, Christian's clapping that I remembered what SERP means. Christian Other, is very technical, if y'all didn't get that. Very, and, very good. And I am not, in case you didn't get that. Because um, other than other than I know how to push a button and start a webinar, so and then I can just talk. So anyway, so uh, yeah, go through and the, you know, go through the questions that you have available to you, and, and going through that prospect um, meeting, and then at the end of it, find out if it makes sense to put a proposal together. And if on a scale of one to ten, if it's an eleven, what happens next? And that should set you up for your clear next step of where you go in the process. And see. Um, See, interested as a business of doing what you do, um, I would just say at this point you're not really looking at expanding into unless she wants to be a salesperson for you or you know, something like that. But I don't know if you're bringing if you're really ready to take on a partner or anything. Yeah, so don't, I would just don't do that. I would just meet with them and see see what she, see with read with her other see what she says what she's looking to do and then we can chat about that. Um, how do you contact them? The link is in the box, in the chat box. It's theogirls.com. Uh, she wants to start her own that's online business. Um, that's fine. Just say, you know, just I mean, you can just talk with her and let her know how how dominating of a presence that you have. Um, let's see, on his reputation management client. Um, cool. To follow your challenges intended, do we simply watch our email box, or should we log in daily to your blog? Um, I'm going to post every time I make make a post on the blog. Um, I will send an email, but if you um, so, or, or if it's, I'm going to do it as soon as I do after I post it to the blog. Sometimes it may be an hour or so after I post it, but I will send an email every time I make a posting. So. Okay, and one thing really, really quick, guys, uh, for you that haven't got a first client, um, you can actually you're surrounded by businesses that you go in and every day. And this is a quick example. Oh, yeah. this is a great. This is this, great. So, anyways, I got LASIK done a couple months ago. That's LASIK surgery to improve her eyesight. Right. <laughs> and so after a couple days after I had LASIK, they um, called me and said, "Hey, will you post on Google?" I said, "Hey, I'll do one better yet. I'll spin you out a video." So if you guys look up um, LASIK surgery, Greenville, South Carolina. Carolina, don't watch the video, it's crappy. I did it real quick. But anyways, it got to the front page in two days. What happened after that video got to the front page in two days, I sent the girl an email, hey, just to let you know, it's on the front page of Google. They called me back and they um, had me shoot five videos for them for around $1,600. And it was real quick, went in and shot the videos. That being said, what is since from that, I'm going to be sitting down with them. They have two surgery centers, six um, locations for optometrists, and four websites. But I just got a call while I was in San Diego. Her husband, the one lady who's head of marketing over there, um, runs the Greenville Country Club. And I just sat down with him yesterday, and we're going to make one video for around $2,000 and then do a history video in a few months, uh, another month, a month later for them. And so if you do some free stuff, I mean, don't get caught up in giving everything away for free. Videos are really, really quick, and you can get those out there um, fast and a lot of times ranking. Um, but if you can do stuff like that, and um, you'd be surprised and I've done it before and I literally when I didn't have anything to do and didn't have clients um, I would do stuff like that or help someone out and it always comes back to you tenfold I mean right. it really does and so what she said was <laughs> I'm sorry I was trying to hurry is, I know you go. Is, is to someone that you already go to some a business that you already frequent shoot a quick video testimonial with them you can use your iPhone or your, a small flip camera or whatever and post that and post it, you know, with their keyword, with you know, with you know, like she did LASIK surgery, Greenville, South Carolina, and posted it on YouTube, and it went to the first page. Uh, she did a few things other I than that. It. She I spun, spun it, it out. out. What she means by spinning it out, she posted it on about 50 different video sharing sites and did some backlinking in order to move that up the page. There again, if that's something that you want to do, that's something that you, know, you can also get done through outsourcing. So just keep that in mind. It's an easy way to then you've shown 
you've shown results in advance, you've shown them that you've done something you care and you've done something to help them, and they will probably be more likely because with that, she just told them it was there. They said, can you do more of that? Come in, we'd like to, can you shoot more videos? She said yes, and that's how she got the business. So with that, let's see if there's any last minute questions. Um, let's see, Jody, let's see. Um, yes, I'll help you with that, Aisha. See. No, actually, we fil filmed the videos that time. Yeah, she went and she actually did the videos. She shot them with a regular little Canon video camera. I had someone else do them come with me <laughs> so I wouldn't break things. I don't want my own personality on video. Can I easily shoot another customer's testimony? Oh, yeah, I hate absolutely. mine. I hate yes. mine on video, yeah. but yeah, you can use. You can use anybody, absolutely. All right, everyone, I hope you have enjoyed it. Like I said, the, the link is in the chat box, jodyunderhill.wordpress.com. You'll be able to follow that, and I'll be sending out a link every day, this stuff, every step of the way. I appreciate everyone. Uh, there's still over 30 people who hang in, hung in here on this. There was over 50 at one time. There's still 30 of them hang out for the whole two hours. So I appreciate that, and I look forward to seeing you on the journey for the challenge. Bye, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye, guys. Bye.